we will now look at how we go about choosing a core router for our campus. And as we did with the switches, we'll look at the essential features first. First off, we need lots of fiber ports. And these fiber ports would either be 1 gig or 10 gig, so SFP or SFP+. In fact, some campuses are now looking at even 25 gig, 40 gig, or even 100 gig as the price of those ports starts reducing. We want to have robust line rate routing, so layer 3 forwarding, supporting IPv4 and IPv6, as well as static routes. We need sufficient ARP for IPv4 and neighbor discovery protocol for IPv6. We need DHCP relay or DHCP helper, depending on what the vendor calls it. And we need proper management using Secure Shell, SNMP version 2, or preferably SNMP version 3. For routing protocols, at least OSPF, and that includes OSPF v2 and OSPF v3, or ISIS. We also have some optional features, probably quite desirable features to have, but not showstoppers if you don't get them. But try and include these in your campus core router specification as well. So first off, having HSRP or VRRP would be quite useful. HSRP stands for Hot Standby Routing Protocol. VRRP is the standard version Virtual redu Router Redundancy Protocol. This allows two routers to act as the default gateway on a single LAN. These two routers negotiate who is, acts as the default gateway with one in active mode and the other one in passive mode. As you know, an end user device cannot be configured with two default gateways, so HSRP or VRRP allows two routers to act as the default gateway for each campus LAN. In the case that one router fails, the other one carries on providing the default gateway support. Having a mirror or span port is also very useful. This port allows you to basically duplicate traffic going through a particular user port. You may want to do this for further inspection. It could be a denial of service attack or some other malicious activity happening on the network that you want to investigate more closely without actually disrupting the traffic flow between end systems. And then what about hardware redundancy? Vendors heavily promote hardware redundancy, such as dual power supplies, dual route processors, dual line cards, and so forth. But if you think about it, would you actually be better buying a second device? You could buy a super redundant device, as the slide shows, dual route processor, redundant line cards, dual power supplies, and so forth. What happens when the chassis fails? And these are not unknown either. What would you do then? Your super redundant device is, not just now, a chunk of metal. No use to the campus at all, and the redundancy features have not helped you at all. It's quite often a lot better to buy two less redundant devices. So buying a core router with its own route processor, uh, sufficient line cards for the users or the distribution switches that are connecting to it, and a single power supply. In fact, these days, most devices you buy end up with dual power supplies in any case. But having two less redundant devices that you're running 50% capacity means that if one fails, you simply move the other connection on the failed device onto the other router. You run both non-redundant devices live live, so everything is tested. And in emergency, as I was saying, you can just move key users over to the other side. Or if you have sufficient capacity, you can move all of them. Key buildings could be dual homed. And this is where OSPF comes in and HSRP or VRRP, as I mentioned earlier. And the other piece of advice is don't spend too much. In fact, many edge layer 3 switches will make fine campus routers. Remember early on in this session, I was saying don't buy layer 3 features for your edge switches. And in fact, a lot of these edge switches where the vendors try and promote the layer, th the, the layer 3 capability, you could just use them for the core router quite easily. You're not going to be carrying the full routing table, 
So a limit of 16,000 routes that you get in a lot of these layer 3 switches isn't a problem. Just keep an eye out as to how many interfaces and how many VLANs are supported. Some of the cheaper layer 3 switches only support maybe 16 or 32 or 64 VLANs, and that could end up being quite problematic for a core router. And anyway, what you buy today is going to be obsolete in three to five years anyway. And if it's cheap, you can afford two. So let's have a look at some possible candidates for campus core router. We mentioned the Cisco 3850 Catalyst switch earlier um, in the context of the distribution switch. Well, that has 12 or 24 ports. There also is a 48 port version with one gig or 10 gig ports, dual personality. And it also has a module that will support uplinks. And the base IP image that comes with the basic switch is sufficient for OSPF and for IPv6 support. The 12 and 24 port versions are stackable up to nine units if you want that. So you may can start off with a 24 port, which will give you connectivity to 24 distribution switches. And once you run out, buy another one, stack them together, and you've got a 48 port switch. If you don't like that, Cisco is very good at competing with itself, and there's a Catalyst 4500X. 16 or 32 10 gig ports, which can also run at 1 gig if you plug in the 1 gig SFP. And it has an optional 8 port 10 gig e expansion module you can buy as well. IPv4 and IPv6 with a base IP license is sufficient for most campus core router needs. If you buy the enterprise license, you can get BGP. You can stack two together using two 10 gig Ethernet ports using something Cisco calls VSS. And if you don't like that, you can buy a Cisco Nexus 3548X, as we show on the slide. This is the same feature set as the two previous ones I introduced, 48 SFP plus ports that can be run at 1 gig or 10 gig, and they can even run at 100 megabits, even though this is not really documented. Handy for backwards compatibility. Doesn't run Cisco's iOS, it runs NX OS, which is used for the Nexus. It looks the same as iOS, but it's not the same. Replaces the older Nexus 3064, which um, Network Startup Resource Center has used in a lot of campus deployments over recent years. The nice thing with the 3064 is that it also had four 40 gig Ethernet ports. Very, very handy for uplinks or connecting the two Nexus switches together. Just so that uh, we don't leave other people out, Juniper has the equivalents that Cisco has. There's the EX4200, which has 24 SFP ports and two optional 10 gig modules for uplinks. These are stackable as well, but you don't need the advanced feature license, which will give you ISIS, BGP, and MPLS. You don't need any of these for the campus core router. There's also the EX4500, which is the big brother of the EX4200. Uh, which is actually very similar to the Cisco 40, Catalyst 4500. Got 40 SFP plus ports, again, dual personality, one gig or 10 gig, and with optional uplink modules. Just be aware they have a limited number of V6 neighbor discovery protocol entries, only a thousand in hardware, which could be limiting for a campus with a sizable V6 deployment. If you don't like these small switches that we're encouraging you to look at for your campus core, then after this, you're looking at chassis switches. And these are huge devices. Um, we've listed the Cisco 4500E, the Nexus 7000 series, the modern versions now that Cisco and Juniper are releasing, Juniper EX 8000s in various chassis sizes as well. They may look very attractive and may look stunning in your data center for your campus, but do you need them? So many of the trips that Network Startup Resource Center has made on part of its direct engineering assistance with various campuses around the world, we, we see these uh, massive chassis switches taking pride of place in the campus network. And so often, we only see two or three line cards in use which is a considerable waste in a lot of these switches which have maybe eight or 16 slots. These switches are massively power hungry 
and of course would have been very expensive for the university to purchase in the first place. So we recommend to campus administrators to think carefully about the size of your layer 3 switch you're going to use for your campus core router. You shouldn't need anything more than three or four or five rec units. This will be a much cheaper device, and once you run out of space, buy a second one and you can start exploring some of the redundancy options that we hinted at with HSRP, VRRP, and OSPF earlier on. Maybe you already have an existing switch which has good layer 3 support and you can use it for your campus core. So check the features of your existing devices. Check on forums for experience of other people using the same device for routing. You may only have to do simple things like turn on IP routing and it becomes a layer 3 uh, device. You may need to update the latest stable firmware. We always recommend that you run all your devices with the latest stable firmware from the vendor. That makes sure that you have latest security updates and also the latest bug fixes in the software. If you have a spare device, test on that one first. Test the feature set, how the routing works, how the DHCP helper or relay is working, how OSPF, VRRP, HSRP, and so forth. 